let's talk about how we want to implement mathematical functions that are recursive. So here's an example of a recursive mathematical function. And you can see there's two cases. So f of n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1. Otherwise, f of n is equal to n squared plus n minus f of n minus 1. Now this is the function we're defining. So we're defining this we're defining this function in terms of itself, which is what a recursive function is. And we can actually implement this in Java. So here I have a Java class. I'm going to call it recursive math functions. And we're going to do this one and some additional ones. And so here's as best I could represent that function using text. And notice there's two cases. So when we write our function, we're going to have a parameter n. And I'm going to call it recursive function, even though it's f here. That's just so that each function that we write will be called which of the categories it's trying to demonstrate. So as we go through, we're not going to call these functions f because there's going to be more than one. So we use a more descriptive name. So my first case, if n is less than or equal to 1, then I'm going to return 1. Now you may say, why are you saying less than or equal to 1 here? Well, if you'll notice, in the recursive case, we're subtracting 1. So if we had a negative number passed to this for whatever reason, or even 0, as we subtract 1, we're taking f of negative numbers, and this function isn't defined with negative numbers. So we're going to avoid having that potential for an error by, in our base case, if n is less than or equal to 1, we're just going to return 1. Now, otherwise, it's 2n squared plus n minus f of n minus 1. OK, so we can do that much, because we're going to return 2 times n times n, that's n squared, plus n and minus, here we need to calculate f of n minus 1. Well, how do we do that? Well, we simply call our recursive function on n minus 1. So let's write some test code to see if that will work. And to do that, I'm going to create a for loop so that we can try different values. Okay, so here I'm printing a header, and then in this for loop, and I'm going from 1 to 10 inclusive because I want to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to print out f of i, whatever i is, and then I'm going to call recursive function with that value. So let's run this and see what happens. And I have an error. Looks like I'm missing a space there, and is that going to take care of it? I'm also missing a parentheses. So let's try it now. Looks like it's going to work. And here's my values. And I've actually checked these values beforehand, and I know that these are what I would expect from those. So how is this working? Because it might, at first, if you're used to writing methods that have a lot of code in them, this is fairly simple from a code standpoint. But how is it actually working? So let's take a look. So here's the function that we're implementing. And here's the code. And I've changed the name of the code to f from recursive function just to save some space. So let's suppose that we call f of 6. Because f of n is 2n squared plus n plus f of n minus 1. So we'll have 2 times 6 squared plus 6 minus this. However, what's this value? Well, I need to calculate it. And again, we fill in the values here. And we're going to need to call f of 4. f of 4 is going to want to call f of 3. And notice, we're not actually doing this arithmetic yet. We're still calling values down to f of 2. So here, we're back to f of 3. We, did, we ran out of space. I'm moving this back up. f of 3 is going to call f of 2 which is going to call f of 1. And now we're at our base case. f of 1 is defined to be 1. So now I can start filling in the result of my function. So when I called f of 2, I, I needed f of 1, which is 1. Now I can do this arithmetic. Now that I have f of 2, I can fill that in when I am calculating f of 3. And so now I can do 2 times 3 squared plus 3 minus 9, which is equal to 12. So now that I have f of 3, I can finish the calculation for f of 4. 2 times 4 squared plus 4 minus f of 3, which is 12. And so when I do that, I get 24. So now when I return to this call, when I'm calculating f of 5, I use 24 in place of f of 4. And I can do that arithmetic. I get 31. And then finally, to calculate f of 6, I now have f of 5. So I can plug that in and do the arithmetic. And when I do that, I get 47.
Okay, so hopefully that helps you sort of see what's happening. So now let's see some additional mathematical recursive functions that have some different characteristics. So for example, we can have multiple base cases. Here we have three base cases. If n is one, we return zero. If n is three, we return one. And if n is a multiple of five, we return n. So the base case doesn't have to be the smallest value the function will take. If we pass in 500, this function will return 500. And then our recursive case is it returns n plus f of n minus one. So let's see what that looks like in code. Before we start, I will paste in a comment that has a text representation of what the function is. This is just so anybody not watching the video, but who has the examples can see what this should look like. We'll call this function multiple base cases. It'll take an integer parameter. And if n is less than or equal to one, again, we don't have a case for negative numbers. So I'm just gonna return that bottom, that initial base case. We'll return zero if n is equal to one or if it's less than one. If n is equal to three, we're gonna return one. Actually, let's close this so we can see the whole function as you write it, because this is gonna be a fairly long set of if statements here. I'm gonna put an F else here, although technically you don't need it because if any of these cases matches, it returns. However, I'm gonna put an else here just to indicate that these are intended to be separate cases. Now our next case is if n is a multiple of five. Well, we can use modulo to figure that out. So if I say n modulo five, if that result is equal to zero, then I know that the number is a multiple of five. So I'm gonna return n because that's what my function tells me to do. Now my last case is if there's any, any other case here, I'm gonna return n plus f of n minus one, which is multiple base cases of n minus one. And that completes my function. Now I can scroll down to my main and test it. And actually it's gonna be the same exact test code. The only difference is I'm gonna change the name of the function. So I'm gonna copy and paste this and change recursive function to multiple base case or cases. And I'll do that here as well. And I'll run this code. And you can see here are my results. Okay, so we've seen multiple base cases. What if we have multiple recursive cases? So here, if n is one, we return one. If n is even, we divide by n by two and we add f of n minus one. Otherwise, if n is odd, we add n minus one to f of n minus one. Okay, so this is kind of a weird function, but we can implement it. So here's a comment with, a, with the text there. And we'll say public static int multiple recursive cases. And so here, if n is less than or equal to one, our base case will return one. Otherwise, if it's even, and we'll check that just like we checked if it was a multiple of five, except we'll use two here now. And if that's equal to zero, then I know that this is an even number. So if that's the case, I'm going to return n divided by two plus multiple recursive cases of n minus one. So notice this parameter is always decreasing as I move through. So it's a different parameter each time that I'm using. And then finally, otherwise, and here I just know that n is odd because it's not one or, or smaller. And I know it's not even, so it has to be a positive odd number. So in this case, I'm going to return n minus one plus multiple recursive cases of n minus one. So let's test this. And again, we'll just copy what we had before, change our function names and run. And there you can see we get some results. And those would be what we expect. So one last example, in all the recursive cases we've seen so far, we're subtracting one. What if we have a recursive case where we need to add one? So here's an example of that. This is a function where if n is less than 100, we return n plus f of n plus two. And you may say, well, that's odd. How are we ever gonna get to our base case? Well, it turns out here, our base case is 
if n is greater than 100, we return 100. So we don't have to get to a smaller and smaller case. We just have to approach some case that when we get to that case, we'll end the recursion. So the base case doesn't always mean the smallest thing. It just means when we stop having recursions. So let's see how we're going to implement this. So we'll say public static int, and we'll call this recursive count up, even though it's not actually counting up, but the recursion is counting up. So if n is greater than or equal to 100, that's our base case, we're going to return 100. Otherwise, and I'll fix that typo, otherwise, we're going to return n plus a recursive count up of n plus 2. Notice another difference here is that our recursive step size isn't 1, it's 2. And again, eventually when we call this enough, we will get to 100. No matter how small this is, we could have a very large negative number in this case. We don't even have to worry about negative numbers because this particular function is defined on negative numbers. So let's copy and paste one more time. And remember, we called this recursive count up. So we need to change the name of the function we're calling. And let's run that. And there you see our results. All right, hopefully that gave you some insight into how to write recursive mathematical functions. There are other videos that have examples where we're not doing just math, we're doing other things. For example, working with strings, arrays, and print statements. So hopefully, once you've gone through these examples, they'll start to make sense. And again, the best way to do this is just to practice it. Make up your own recursive functions and try to write them. It's very easy to make up a recursive function. You just give it a base case and give it a recursive case, and you can have it do whatever arithmetic you want in those recursive cases.